Hey y'all, Kerry Werner here, Bike Flight's brand ambassador, here with a video to help you avoid bulging boxes and equipment damage, all while helping you secure the best shipping rate. Ever try to pack your bike into a box and it seems like it won't quite fit? We find this sometimes happens, for example, when packing some mountain bikes or other larger bikes into a Bike Flight's bike box large. It's often because they tend to be taller and or have longer wheelbases. Not to fear. Over the years, Bike Flights has learned a few hacks to help you eke out a few extra inches safely and securely so you can pack your bike in the best box size possible. Here are a few tricks of the trade. While the BBXL boasts the ability to just plop a bike in there with minimal component removal, smaller boxes like the BBL may require you to remove one or both wheels from your bike. Be sure to protect the axles of any removed wheels and secure them into place within your box. Also, use dropout spacers to maintain the spacing between your fork and frame dropouts. Remove your bars and secure them into place with proper padding. Be sure not to put any undue strain on the cables that could cause them to kink. Let the air out of your suspension fork. This reduces the overall height of the bike, allowing it to fit into boxes that aren't as tall. Let the air out of your rear shock. This reduces the bike's wheelbase, making it shorter and gives you a little bit of extra wiggle room in the length department. Note, if you let the air out of your suspension, don't forget to pack a shock pump so you can reinflate your suspension on the destination side of your itinerary. Let some air out of your tires. Be careful if you're running tubeless not to let too much out as the tire could then become unbeaded, which could lead to a stand explosion in your box. Believe me, you don't want that. Again, if you let the air out of your tires, be sure to pack a frame pump or hand pump so you can reinflate your tires on the ride side of your itinerary. Drop it like it's hot. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. If you have a dropper, that is. If you don't, either lower your post into the frame as low as possible or remove it and secure it so it doesn't move around in the box during transit, causing damage to other equipment. Remember to take any tools you may need for reassembly here. This becomes more important as you take more and more parts off your bike to make it fit into the box. Consider turning your fork 180 degrees. Forks have a rake, which puts the front wheel out in front of the bike. Mountain bikes have a longer rake than road, gravel, and cross bikes. By turning the fork 180 degrees, the rake will be pointing backwards, shortening the overall length of the bike. If you've removed either or both wheels, experiment with exact wheel placement within your box during packing to get the best fit so your box doesn't bulge out of the sides. For example, a removed wheel might fit in your box better on the drive side or the non-drive side depending on your bike and your case. And it will always fit easier and better and more safely in your box if you've also already removed your pedals. Lastly, remember that packing your bike in a smaller box will get you better shipping rates, but smaller boxes aren't always better for packing your bike. You don't want to pack your bike in a box that's too small. When contents are crammed together too much, damage is more likely to occur during shipping. Make sure you choose a box so that you have room for all the protective padding around your frame and fork. Give this video a like, and for more packing and shipping related videos, subscribe to the Bike Flights YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.